Hi guys, welcome to your uh, prosthodontic lecture. We will continue with the components of removal partial denture, which is a part two. Last time we spoke about minor and major connectors and rest, as in this time we will speak more about direct and indirect retainers, which is basically clasp and different types of clasp. So what is a direct retainer? A clasp or an attachment placed on an abutment tooth for the purpose of holding a removable partial denture in position. So when we say a part of a, a removable partial denture, basically when you place a denture in a patient's mouth, it has to be retentive. When we say retentive, that means to say it should be in its place without getting displaced. That is when a patient wears his upper denture, it should not fall down. The falling of it will happen because of gravitational force. So to prevent this, we give some part of the prosthesis which hangs on or holds on to the abutment teeth. And this part is called as a clasp. So basically the clasps hold on to the abutment teeth and prevent the falling of these removable partial denture. So that part is called as direct retainer or the clasp is called as a direct retainer. Now coming to the components of a clasp, there are a few parts of a clasp that you should remember. Uh, if you see the image on the right side, they are being labeled and accordingly they have the labeling has its uh, own name. So the first one is called as a retentive terminal. The second one is the retentive clasp arm. The third is the reciprocal arm, which is on the other side of the clasp arm. Then you have the occlusal rest. Then we have the shoulder. Then we have the body and the minor connector. As we said in the learning outcomes, we have certain requirements for a clasp assembly to function or to be satisfied. What are these requirements? First is retention. Second is support. Third is stability, reciprocation, encirclement and passivity. Now looking at retention, uh, what is retention? Basically the ability of the denture to prevent itself from dislodging away from the tissue surfaces that is falling off when you when an upper denture is bone it should not fall down so the clasp should help in retaining the denture in its position so how does it do is basically by engaging the undercut so if the clasp goes and locks into the undercut it prevents the denture from falling down then rest must provide support to maintain clasp terminal in place Components must provide sufficient encirclement to prevent movement of the abutment away from the associated clasp assembly. Next coming to support. So when we say support, it is the opposite of retention. That means to say the displacement of the prosthesis towards the tissue surface or in the apical direction. So any kind of occlusal forces, the denture should not press on to the tissue surface. So if it does not press, then it is called the support. So there are certain components which prevent these, this uh, pr pressing of this denture onto the tissue surface. So basically that portion is called a support and the clasp also does this uh, does should provide this requirement. So how does it provide a clasp has got a part called rest which lies on the abutment tooth. So this rest prevents uh, displacement of the denture towards the tissue surface or gives support to the removable prosthesis. Next, we speak about stability. Stability is the ability of the denture to displace uh, in a horizontal direction, to prevent its displacement in the horizontal direction. So this can be done by all framework components are rigid. If the framework components are rigid, then there is no displacement in the horizontal directions. And also all framework contact vertically oriented, oriented hard and soft tissue. So next we come into the reciprocation. So what is reciprocation? So the arm which is onto the uh, opposite side of the clasp arm is the reciprocating arm. So what happens in a reciprocating arm or what happens when a denture is worn? Let's, let's say when the patient is wearing the denture, the clasp actually runs over the maximum bulbosity of the tooth and then engages into the undercut. While he is removing, the same happens. It goes over the maximum bulbosity of the tooth and comes out. So this class, when it is running over the maximum bulbosity of the tooth or the height of contour, as we say, it exerts some pressure onto the tooth. So when the pressure is exerted onto the tooth, the tooth tends to move. 
the movement is because there is slight cushioning effect of the tooth by the periodontium where there is slight movement which which is which is usually few millimeters so this moves and comes back so every time the tooth is slightly moving on the long run the tooth tends to become mobile so the reciprocating arm what it does is it holds the tooth in place whereas preventing the uh, preventing the tooth movement and making the clasp to flex more in the height of contour and then get engaged into the undercut so this portion is called as reciprocation so it is done by clasp assembly must include a rigid component that resists lateral movement of the affected tooth and may be a cast clasp lingual plating or a combination of mesial and distal minor connectors should be used to provide reciprocation so encirclement is nothing but the clasp should encircle the tooth completely basically half the tooth circumference of uh, half the tooth circumference of the tooth should be encircled by the clasp assembly now looking at passivity which is the last uh, requirement of the clasp this means when the clasp goes and engages into the undercut it should be passive meaning there should not be any force exerted by the clasp on the tooth only when the denture is been taken out or been worn the the clasp should give some force onto the tooth when it is placed in rest or when the denture is completely worn the clasp should be passive and should be completely rested so the quality of the clasp assembly that prevents the transmission of adverse forces to the associated abutment when the prosthesis is completely seated retentive arm should only be activated only when dislodging forces are applied to rpd otherwise it should remain passive so now coming to direct retainers we have uh, we classify them basically in as intracoronal and extracoronal in this lecture we only speak about extracoronal intracoronal there are two types we have precision attachments and semi precision attachments extracoronal is retentive class assemblies and attachments in this lecture we speak only about retentive class assemblies knowing what is a supra bulge and what is an infra bulge and the different types of clasps and how which category they fall into now indirect intracoronal retainers we have precision and semi precision attachments and coming to the next slide it consists of two distinct components the first and the second component which is a metal uh, receptacle gained with the clinical contours of a fixed restoration second component attached to the associated removable partial denture this bit of precision attachment is a higher degree in prosthodontics which uh, which is which is not so required for you at this point of time so let's leave this intracoronal uh, direct retainers apart and just move on to the extracoronal direct retainers so extracoronal as we discussed it is retentive class assembly and attachment and supra and infra bulge clasps is what we are going to learn about so now the difference between a supra bulge clasp and an infra bulge clasp this is how it looks so the supra bulge is on the left side and the infra bulge is on the right side so what are the main differences you see so any clasp which approaches from the occlusal or the incisal direction and engages the undercut that is the clasp coming from the occlusal surface of the tooth or the incisal surface and then goes down and engages into the undercut this is a supra bulge clasp it requires less force and uh, less force to remove and it is more retentive whereas in an infra bulge clasp the approach is from the apical direction that is from the tissue direction so if you look at the previous diagram you could see that one clasp which comes from the upper side of the tooth and the other one comes from the apical side so the apical side coming is known as the infra bulge clasp it requires more force to remove and it is less retentive now what are supra bulge clasps there are a different or a number of types of supra bulge clasps whereas an infra bulge there are quite a less but there is some amount of them as well so one is cast of uh, cast circumferential clasp simple circlet reverse circlet multiple circlet embrasure clasp ring clasp c clasp onlay clasp design and wrought wire circumferential clasp now coming to cast circumferential clasp 
So cast of conferential is nothing but a C class which engages, which approaches occlusally as you see in the picture and the diagram which is uh, shown beneath. The clasp is usually most logical. This is the most accepted, most logical class because it is more stabilizing and has more retention. So it is the most widely used clasp. Basic design of the clasp is buccal and lingual arm originating from a common body. The next type is a multiple circlet design. In this multiple circlet design, uh, you have the reciprocal arm which is joined and the, uh, and the retentive arm which is not joined. As you see in the figure, the upper picture shows the reciprocal arm which is joined at the embrasure and the retentive arm on the lower picture shows the retentive arm which is engaging into the undercut. So, the disadvantage is two embrasure approaches are necessary rather than a single common embrasure for both clasps and the indication is basically when half of the partial half of your teeth are missing. So for an example let's say uh, you have the lower mandible and you say the right side of the lower mandible there is no teeth and the left side there are teeth. So when you give a removable, a removable prosthesis for such patients, you do not have any abutment tooth on the right side to get retention from. So all the retention has to be provided from the left side of the tooth. So in this case, you will use something like a multiple circlet design. This gives an additional retention and also engages and gives you better holding of the denture in the or holding of the denture or the processes in the mouth. So this is where it is being indicated. Next comes is the embrasure clasp. Embrasure clasp is a clasp essential. Essentially two single circlet clasps are joined together. As you see in the picture, you have the clasp which is uh, in the embrasure where the rest lies on the mesial and the distal surfaces, uh, distal occlusal surface and the retentive arms are engaged into the undercut. So where do you use this embrasure clasp? Embrasure class when you are going to replace let's say there is on the right side of the mandibular molar Sorry on the mandibular the right side is missing whereas the left side has Has teeth, but on the right side it is not half of the teeth missing But it's not half of the arch missing, but let's say one or two teeth are missing So in that circumstance you need some kind of retention from the left side of the mandible So in, in such cases you use embrasure clasp design Next is a ring clasp design. So as the name itself says, it's a ring like it, it, uh, it engages the tooth completely in a ring form, starting from the buccal surface and uh, buccal surface and goes all the way and engages into the lingual surface or it can be the other way around where it starts from the lingual surface and uh, encircles the entire tooth and engages onto the buccal surface. So where do you use this is basically you use this in a tilted molars and a lone standing molar. What happens in a tilted molars is basically the maximum bulbosity or the undercut is on the mesial surface, mesiobuccal surface of the tooth. In such instances, you will have to use a ring clasp. Then you have the hairpin or the reverse action clasp. It's similar to that of a uh, a ring class but the only thing is it's a hairpin bend so on the buccal surface as you see the clasp runs over and then hairpins and comes and engages into the mesiobuccal surface of the tooth this can also be used on the lone standing uh, molars then you have half and half clasp. This is a clasp which is never used and basically for theoretical purpose you should know what a half and half clasp is or basically if anybody has provided you should know that how it looks like. So basically in this is uh, the entire clasp assembly is not in one segment but it is split into two whereas the reciprocal arm is different and the retentive arm is different which is connected by two different minor connectors. So on this, the it is all uh, it's always the other way around. Whereas the reciprocation is on the buccal arm, and and the uh, retention is from the lingual arm, which un which uh, under uh, which engages the undercut. 
then you have is the back action clasp which is also a modification of ring clasp and it is basically has no advantages and completely disadvantage and is never never been used now you have the last one is called the combination clasp so a combination clasp is is nothing but it's just like a clasp but the materials what are used is different meaning the retentive arm is made of wrought wire whereas the reciprocal arm is made of a clasp arm so basically the uh, the denture base which is made is usually made with an alloy which is called the cobalt chrome alloy so every every components are basically of the same cobalt chrome but what happens when a retentive arm is given with a wrought wire then this clasp is called as a combination where the reciprocal arm will be of the same uh, of the same uh, denture base so now coming to types of infra bulge clasp designs so any clasp which comes from the tissue surface or approaching from the tissue surface and engaging the undercut as you see in the picture is called as an infra bulge there are four types we have t clasp modified t clasp y clasp i bar and rpi concept so now understanding what is indirect retention so indirect retention is nothing but retention given in an indirect way whereas a clasp was given in a direct way indirect retention gives it in an in indirect or you can say it supports the direct retention so a part of removable partial denture which assists the direct retainers in preventing displacement of distal extension denture base by functioning through lever action on the opposite side of the fulcrum so what it means to say is basically the uh, basically says that direct retainers prevent displacement but indirect retainers keep the dentures in place there are different types of indirect retainers we have auxiliary occlusal rest we have canine extension from occlusal rest canine rest continuous bar retainers or lingo lingo plates modification areas rugae support direct indirect retention indirect retention from major connectors so now we spoke about direct and indirect retention now we go further to know what are the different types of denture bases so different types of denture base we have acrylic resin as you see the pink plastic one you guys would have made it in your clinics and then you have the metal or the cast metal alloys which you would hardly have seen but probably read a little bit in your books so these cast metal alloys are made of different ones we have cobalt chromium nickel titanium alloys titanium aluminium vanadium alloys and commercial pure titanium in our college we usually use a cobalt chromium or a pure titanium uh, denture base now what is the difference between these two acrylic is less strength less thermal conductivity easy to reline and repaste and sometimes a little less heavy when compared to the cast metal alloy whereas the cast metal alloy is more strength because it's a metal it has a better thermal conductivity because it's a metal it has more adaptation and hygiene and it is uh, it is usually used on a healed and a well contour ridges it can never be relined or repaced now we have the artificial teeth the artificial teeth are nothing but the acrylic teeth which are fused onto the acrylic denture bases so now comes the question how do you uh, put it on a metal alloy basically on the metal alloy a small layer of acrylic is also poured on which these denture uh, acrylic teeth are placed and fused to the acrylic dentures tooth replacements so we have the anterior and posterior when you think about anterior tooth replacement always remember it's for aesthetic purpose and for your posterior it's always for your mastication purpose so there are uh, four methods for replacing anterior teeth one is porcelain or plastic denture teeth on denture base we have facings tube teeth and uh, wraps which is called as reinforced acrylic pontics whereas in the posterior we have plastic teeth porcelain teeth metal pontics metal pontics with acrylic windows tube teeth and reinforced acrylic pontics so that's everything for your uh, lecture for today uh, thank you for listening for the lecture and if there are any questions based on these chapters which i have taken please do approach me uh, in the department of postodontics and i'll be very happy to help you out 
Thank you.